Hello everyone! How are you? I hope you I hope you're doing good. Can you hear me? Good. Thanks, Russell. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so um learning code for today. So today we need to cover orthographic, orthographic projection and also perspective proje projection. Uh, we will mostly uh, stay in orthographic projection, but yeah, we will basically cover uh, both. But uh, okay, so we have 50, 56 participants, which is very good. Uh, again, can you say yes if you can hear me? Because only one person said yes. Good, okay, so everything is fine, perfect. So I have a couple of announcements. Uh, before doing this so okay so first apparently we still have problems I mean some some of some students are having problems to access uh, YouTube videos uh, either because whatever restrictions or VPN problems or whatever so I had to um, I'm uploading the videos oh Ivan is is asking if they're in YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Well, they are on the web page, right? And the link from the web page is basically going to YouTube, YouTube, right? Uh, they're unlisted on YouTube, but yeah, you can access those. So the thing is, I'm also uh, uploading the, the videos to Canvas. Okay. So if you have any problem, or you experienced any problem before accessing uh, YouTube, or you have problems right now, um, I'm literally uploading exactly the same files into the modules on Canvas. So if you go there you will see that I think I'm already uploaded like four or five of them. We obviously take it takes time. So you'll probably finish finish that uh, today. So yeah, so I, I, and I will keep posting those on Canvas and also on the web page on YouTube with YouTube links, right? Okay. And then regarding the, okay. And also uh, I'm already uploaded the extra video for inverse kinematic and this is, super important maybe some of you already decided that you don't want to um you don't want to pursue the the the, the bonus points for the uh, second uh, coding assignment right but um the thing is the information that is on on that extra video is is part of the course and it is part of the of the entire knowledge that we are having in these lectures right so it can be in either a midterm or the final exam so please, everybody needs to see that extra video, okay? I'm, I'm assuming that everybody will see any possible extra video that I, I make, right? Uh, whether or not you're, you're willing to do the, the, bonus, the bonus points. So the extra video is there, so please check, check that out. And, and again, if you have questions on, on the video, uh, I don't know, for some reason, it took me a lot of time to record that video, and I had to edit a lot of, a lot of pieces, so... Yeah, I hope you like it. If you have questions, um, if you have question, no, no, it's not. It's not intro kinematics. It's inverse kinematics. So yeah, if if you have questions, again, you can just post on Piazza. And remember, I also have uh, my office hours uh, is today from four thirty to five thirty on on Zoom. And I think I think the link is already on on Canvas also. And what else? What else? Okay, so. Regarding the review, we already have a lot of content, right? So the review is on is our, our next lecture, right? So as always, our lecture is from 3 to 4 p.m. But I think I will probably need more hour, more time, I mean, more than one hour. So maybe after 4 p.m., I will just keep recording. And I mean, anyone is welcome to stay. So, so yeah, so basically... Um, if if you obviously have another another courses or whatever, you can just leave the room, and obviously I will op I I will uh, upload the video um, after right. But if you want to stay, you can stay because yeah I, I think we we probably will stay a little bit more than one hour, and it will be nice to have someone there to actually uh, ask questions. Um, Okay, Doruk is asking if we have a review on Monday. No, because I think Monday is Thanksgiving, right? Or am I wrong? I think Monday is Thanksgiving. So we don't have classes on Monday. Yes. Okay, good question. So what is the exact time for the midterm? The midterm is on Wednesday 
yeah, it's next Wednesday uh, from 3 to 4, exactly the same time as, as our lecture, right? Okay, so again, our next lecture is the review. It will be probably a, a bit more time. And you want to stay, if you want to stay, that will be very nice. And it will be very nice for me if you can ask uh, questions. And and we don't have any classes on Monday, okay? Uh, will there practice midterm? Okay, so people is asking a couple of things about the midterm. Yes, so regarding the midterm, because that, that is also something that I wanted to, to tell you. So the TS and I, we are making a great effort for you to have a best the best possible experience on the course, right? I mean, we do make mistakes sometimes. We can have typos on Piazza or whatever, but, right? But we are doing a great effort to make the best, the best experience for you. And this obviously includes uh, any examination, right? So in terms of the midterm, we haven't uh, give you the, the details of the format of the midterm and like the logistics of that because we're still deciding a couple of, 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 of things. So I told you before that we wanted to, to uh, go for a two stages exam. The problem is, again, this thing of having more than 100 people online in different countries is can create a lot of a lot of problems right so the problem of that is um i believe that when you're doing a midterm you should focus on solving the midterm and not in super weird or complicated logistics right to upload this file or whatever right or connecting or making teams and things like that and the thing is as more variables that we have we have we could have more problems right and maybe, maybe someone can not have like a, i don't know enough connection speed to actually talk with their uh with their teammate or whatever so so i don't want to have that i don't want you to have a a, a bad experience and after the midterm say oh i i just spend more time worrying about the invigilation or the actual online process that I needed to take instead of just answering the meter. So we are not sure if we will be able to do the two stages. And also, um, we will probably do the, the, the exam synchronous, right? So the exam will be synchronous. It will be on Wednesday from 3 to 4. Again, uh, I think on the review, I will I will give you more information about the actual format of the of the midterm and um, but yeah about a sample midterm I think I can do that uh, I will probably I can probably release a PDF for you um, as, a, as a midterm um, let me think about it yes I can do that I can I can I can totally do that do that and uh, and maybe you can even like solve it uh, like with other people and things like that right and okay and yes um we are also trying to have an open book midterm but again nothing is totally for sure because we are we haven't still decided for most of the logistics okay um people is asking how many students can we have? how many oh again can we still don't know if we will have a group stage if we do uh, there will be uh, probably very small, so maybe maybe three people, right, per, per group. But we we still don't know because again, it, it needs to be. Um, I need I need to be completely sure that nothing will be nothing will go wrong. Okay. Um, okay. Good. So let's continue. So that is that is uh, basically the announcements I I wanted to to say. So please be patient. Please be patient. I will give you more details about the, the midterm as soon as possible. And again, whatever whatever uh, setup we decided, it will be what we think is the best experience for you in terms of examination, invigilation, and all that stuff. Okay, good. So let's continue. And okay, so we were talking about uh, going from 3D to 2D, right? Basically, this part of the rendering pipeline, the vertex shader that is basically taking the 3D and applying a lot of transformations, uh, a lot of matrix uh, transformations, um, is basically just going from from 3D to 2D, okay? And we said that we need basically three things, right? So we need a camera transformation or an eye transformation. We already, we already saw how to do that, right? On our previous lecture. And 
we will need a projection transformation that basically projects the points from the camera space so that basically all the visible area or the visible volume of those geometries will be in a range of minus one to one like in, in, a, in a small cube hopefully you will understand after after this lecture so basically our lecture today is about this stage in particular projection transformation the last the last part of viewport transformation we will probably see that um, on the next lecture right and but but we are basically I think we are okay with with the timing on the, on the lectures okay so the last time we were we were talking about the camera transformation right so we said that basically what we ask to to the user is uh, the position of the camera, right? The position of a target, which in this case will be kind of like, like here. And just by taking some cross products and interesting stuff, we can create this matrix right here that is basically composed by the basis vectors from the coordinate system from the camera, right? So this is where we end up on la our last uh, lecture, right? Uh, oh, sorry, some, you have a question on the chat, sorry. Uh, okay, I, I will try not to not to read the chat right now. Let me just hide it <laughs> because yeah, I, I I get just distracted. And again, remember I will have pauses and you can raise your hand and just use audio, right? Okay, so this is a camera matrix, right? This is what we usually call camera matrix. So we said that if we want to convert the uh, the coordinates that are in world coordinate system to like to translate that into camera system right basically we need to use the inverse of the camera matrix right so that actually has a name right so the inverse of that that camera matrix is what usually call view matrix right so the camera matrix is the 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 transformation matrix from the camera as if the camera was another object in the scene Right? The view matrix is the inverse of that. Okay, so that leads us to basically to the entire system of, three, of of matrices that are composed to get something from 3D to 2D. Right, and you you will see that this is very similar to what you have already on your vertex sheet. Right, and again remember because we are using column notation, we are re uh, um, reading right to left. And something super important, there's, I think there's already a, a Piazza post. There's some situations uh, working with local, uh, with local coordinates in which you can also read from left to right. And I think uh, Tianxin uh, created a tutorial in one of, in one of the um, labs uh, that is talking about that. So that is, I think that is, that is very good. But that is not necessarily part of the lecture, so don't worry that will not be included on on any midterm or final exam okay so basically what we have is again several matrices right so let's see what each matrix is basically representing so the first one is the object right the object coordinate system right the ocs or the matrix from the object and this is basically these are the local coordinates from each object and this is literally what you read from the object file right so if this uh, cube right here is an OBJ file, and this could be the Stanford Bonnie or a Dragon or whatever, right? Um, again, this could be a, an OBJ file uh, that maybe it has the origin and maybe in, in, in this position right here, right? Maybe in the, in the center of its base, right? So those are your coordinates, your local coordinates from your OBJ file. So this is that matrix, right? Then we have the model matrix, which is actually the world coordinate system, right? Again, remember that depending on of the author, depending on the technology, depending on the, depending on the company, people use different terms to refer to exactly the same thing. That is, that is not very convenient sometimes, but world coordinate system is the same as saying model coordinate system. It's exactly the same. But the thing is, sometimes people confuse between model and object, right? Because when you have an object, Right? Imagine you have the Stanford Bunny. You say you can say, oh yeah, the Stanford Bunny is a 3D model. So if you if you if someone asks you about the model matrix, you can say, yeah, the model matrix is the one of the object. Well, it turns out that is not. It's the one from the world. Why they use that word, I don't know. But yeah, don't be <laughs> don't be confused because this could be 
in a in a in a question, right? In the midterm. Okay, so the the model matrix or the world matrix or the world coordinate system is basically the transformation of each object in world coordinates, right? So again, this cube right here, right? Its original coordinates from all its corners, right? Are basically uh, with respect to this coordinate system, right? But then, when you are placing each object in the scene, you are rotating, translating, scaling, or whatever you want to do for these objects in the scene, right? You are creating a transformation matrix that is in world coordinates, right? So you multiply that times your original coordinate systems, and you get your um, you get your your three D model, or in this case, your cube and the position you wanted and your the rotation you wanted and etc right so that's the model matrix then the next one is the view matrix right so this is the inverse of the camera matrix remember right so the camera matrix is the original transformation from the camera as, as if the camera is um, a, a an object in the 3d world but the inverse we call it the view right and is defined by the position and orientation of the camera and usually is remember that the camera transformation is usually computed with the, uh, a look at transformation that is exactly what we did last time uh, and I told you there are different types of cameras and there are some systems in which instead of having a camera with a target they only have a free camera and having a free camera is just like having a cube or a bunny or whatever so the way you define the coordinate system or the camera transformation for a free camera is exactly the same as just moving or rotating right a a bunny or a, a cube is way harder right because you and in the end you would need to aim to a certain direction to see something right but sometimes we use free cameras i told you that for example if you want to mimic in in in, in in computer graphics, for example, if you want to mimic something like a GoPro attached to a vehicle, it's probably easier to to use a free camera instead of a target camera, right? Because in that case, you have a camera that is basically attached to an object. It's its parent, right? It's the one that is moving and rotating, right? And basically, the camera is doing nothing. And you will have something very similar to what a GoPro will see in, in real life. But uh, but if you have a target, we usually use the look at transformation. Okay, perfect. Questions? Do you have any questions from this logic here? Yeah, Nam has a question. So yeah. Hi. Hello. Um. So just to be really clear on the difference between the object matrix and the model matrix. Mm -hmm. So um. First of all, is object matrix ever not an identity matrix? It sounds like the model matrix is what defines the orientation of the object in the world coordinates. So, uh, yeah. OK. Again, imagine that this is an OBJ file, right? So right. imagine that the, the cube is an OBJ file. It means that this corner right here, can you tell me which is the coordinates of this corner right here? If this is an OBJ file and this is the origin of that OBJ file, what will be this one? It will be 001. It will be 001. Good. That is in object coordinates, right? Because it's the OBJ. Mm -hmm. But then you, you position this cube into a scene, right? And that scene has right. a 000, zero, zero, which is basically the world coordinate, the, the world coordinate frame, right? So right. when you when you do that, you're basically creating another coordinate frame that in this case has a translation, right? in the mm -hmm. x direction and in y direction right positive right. in x and, 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 uh, and negative in y so could you tell me what do you think or what do you think could be the position of the same corner but now with respect to the world um well that'll be the you have to apply the inverse of the uh no but i mean visually right we have agreed so maybe it will be kind of like like i don't know like 2.8 minus Mm, minus 1.9 uh, I don't know mm, point sure. 0.5 or whatever right yeah so those coordinates are now basically that information is your uh, your matrix your uh, uh, 
model uh, model matrix, right? Because what you did is you basically uh, take the original the original position of that corner, right? Of your, the original position of every possible point in your original OBJ file, and you basically multiply that times the actually translation and rotation you want on this world, right? With respect to the world. And yes, it is it is kind of confusing because in the end, the the coordinate frame that I'm drawing here, right? It is already translated, right? But that's mm -hmm. that's a thing. I mean, this translation, right? The translation and the rotation that you see in this tiny coordinate frame is not from this coordinate frame. It's with respect to the world, right? Yeah, I think I think I'm starting to understand. So okay. um, M object is basically the uh, local orientation. So roll, pitch, and yaw are defined within the object coordinate system, but the displacement, the offset from the world origin is defined within the M model. Yep. Um, uh, my, my question would be like, when do we ever like incorporate scaling into uh, M model? The, 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 does anything except rotation and displacement happen inside into M model? M model? No, no, no. Yeah. You can, no, 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 you can, you can. Uh, yeah, because in the end, M, the M model is, again, is your, your, uh, your world coordinate, right? So, right. Is when you that is when you you place the objects in your scene, right? So yeah, of course you can you can scale, you can skew, reflect, you, you can do whatever you want, right? I see. Maybe maybe I'm uh, mixing the model and object, but yeah, uh, as long as I think vice versa, I think it's fine. <laughs> so let me tell you something that maybe maybe helps to make this clear because yeah, it is it is confusing. It's not your fault. <laughs> it is confusing for everybody. So. Usually, what happens in, in 3D and what happens in computer graphics, for example, is, and the, the reason I am, I am telling you that, in, please imagine that the object matrix is the original OBJ, right? We mm -hmm. usually don't, tr don't apply any transformations to the original OBJ, right? I mean, in, in, in word coordinates, right? When we right. move or rotate an object or even scale an object, is because that object is already in a scene, right? So imagine that it's a bunny, right? So the original bunny, I mean, someone created the model, the model of the of the of the bunny with a certain with a, a specific scale and transformation, and that's it, right? But that object mm -hmm. is already there. So opening that OBJ, opening the, the the actual bunny and scaling the bunny or moving the bunny it doesn't make any sense because it's not. It's, it's not it's, it's um there's no other object right like uh, along with with the bunny right so usually mm -hmm. when you are applying a transformation to an object is because you are placing an object into a scene and it's mm -hmm. a combination of several things right so you have a light you have a camera and you have i don't know several bunnies and you have and you want to make the bunny huge because it needs to destroy a building right okay in that case you yeah you need to scale your bunny right to be to be big enough to destroy a building, for example, right? But that mm -hmm. those transformations are happening on this matrix, right? Not on the one right. of the project, right? Right. So, so he, here's my understanding. So, M, M model is uh, essentially the one that's dictating the scaling, orientation, and offset. But M object is kind of like deformation. Is that, is that what you're trying to say? No, but I, but I, I mean, the first thing we was correct, but I don't understand why you're saying that the M object is the deformation. Uh, what do you mean by uh, that? Like, for example, if you if you wanted the bunny to look smaller, what would you do? Would you ever change the M object uh, mm. so that the axes are, okay. you know, 0.5? Again, imagine why someone needs to get the bunny smaller. What do you think? Because it's probably because maybe you are constructing. Imagine that you are constructing again. Again, you are constructing a scene, and you want to you want to make a render of the bunny. Uh, uh, I don't know, along with a dog, right? And it turns out right. that the bunny is huge, right? So yeah, you are you, you need to scale the bunny down, right? Because it's maybe too too big, but you will scale it on world coordinates, right? Not on object okay. coordinates. So usually, object coordinates never change. Okay. Right. Is that clear? Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. I'll post some follow-up questions later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Any other question? 
Okay, so let's continue. So let's let's do a quick uh, recap, right? Because at the end we are talking about uh, uh, transformation composition, right? So we said before that when we make a composition, we are basically following like a, a recipe, right? And that recipe is we usually we first translate the geometry to a coordinate frame in which the operation is simpler. Then we apply the operation. The operation is, when I said the operation, it could be rotation, scale, things like that. Remember that linear transformations leave the origin fixed, right? So when you, if you want to rotate an object, right? And the object is already placed in another position that is not zero, zero, zero. If you rotate an object, right? The rotation will be not necessarily what you wanted, right? So that's why we usually just take everything, we take everything to the center, right? Then we can perform any rotation, scaling, or whatever, and then we can go back, come back, right? And yeah, the third step is this, right? We finally translate the geometry back to the original coordinate frame. So this is the example that we, um, sorry, that we checked last time, right? And there are basically two flavors of the same recipe. One is with respect to the object, which is basically transforming the object. So this example was, I want to rotate the bunny. So I take the bunny and I take it to the center. Then I rotate it. And then I take the bunny back to the original position, right? So basically what you have there is just three different matrices and you combine those matrices into a single one and you apply that single matrix to the entire bunny and you have your rotation. So this is one possible recipe, transforming the object with respect to the world, right? The other option, which looks weird probably, is doing the opposite, transforming the world. Taking the world, moving into the, into the point from the bunny, rotated the, rotate the world, and then moving the world. And this looks very weird, right? But in the end, those are that is a possible, that's another possible solution, right? So I have a question for you. When you, when you use the, 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 the inverse of the camera transformation, which in this case is called the view transformation, remember? And what is, what is doing that is basically like translating from one language to another, remember? When we are using the inverse of the matrix, the operation we do is similar to translating from one language to another, from Russian to Spanish to from English to whatever, Mandarin or whatever. So what do you think in that case, in, when we are using the inverse uh, of a matrix, um, do you think we are moving the world or moving the object? In this case, what do you think? We are transforming the camera or transforming the world? So you can answer on the chat. I'm checking the chat. And again, remember when you we use the inverse of the matrix, it's like saying, hey B, tell me the coordinates of this point on your coordinate system. It's like tell me this this word that I have in Spanish, please translate it to your language, right? So this is going from A to B. When is the opposite is when we are more like transforming something when we say hey b could you move this point to your one one coordinates right that is a different answer so again what do you think we are doing when we use the inverse of the camera right when we are translating from word coordinates to camera coordinates using the inverse of the camera we are transforming the camera or we are transforming the world what do you think Nobody's answer. Think about it. Camera world, okay. Camera walk walks to the world, world, okay. So we have more people saying that is the world that is changing. And Glory is saying that's deep. Yeah, the thing is, these are the like the geometric intuition of what is happening with those matrices is way more important of even sometimes like the the math that right because you already took a lot of courses of math and you you already know linear algebra right but these are the things that are they are typically very confusing and you need to understand okay 
Well, so, okay, for, for from the people that he's answering, uh, I think most people is saying that is that what, what we are doing is changing the world. And yes, you're totally correct. What we are doing here is basically changing the world. Because remember, when do when we are doing that uh, translation, so we'll come back to this uh, this one here, right? When do when we uh, go from A to B using this inverse of the matrix, right? Again, it's like translating from one language to another. So what it was the 0.51 for the coordinate frame A, right? Now, can you tell me what is what is the new coordinate from point A with respect to B? What is the translation for the language from B? From, from B? What do you think? Can you guess the coordinates just by... Yes, it's 2, 1, right? Yes. So it means that it's what you did in reality is just you literally move the world, right? Because now the the origin of point P, right? If now P has a coordinate 2, 1, it means that its origin is not is not A anymore, right? Now its origin is B. So if it's like like shifting or moving your entire world, moving and rotating your entire world, and now everything is with respect to the camera, right? I mean, in this case, for respect to B, and, uh, but, but now for respect to the camera. If this point B is already in coordinates B, sorry, in this point P is in coordinates B, and you take this point in, and you tell this point, oh, go to zero, 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 this guy will go in this direction, right? It will go to this point right here, because now this guy, this point here is a zero, zero, zero. So this is what exactly happens in the camera. And that's super important because in the end, what we want is to take the entire scene, everything, lights, objects, whatever. What we want is basically to take everything on the scene that is in 3D and basically want to collapse everything into an image that is in 2D. But that image is basically um, uh, is aligned with the camera, right? So it's, it's way easier to move everything with respect to the camera, because now the camera is the zero, 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 right? So yeah, we are actually moving the world. So in computer graphics, we do this weird thing of moving the world instead of moving the, instead of moving the, the bunny. Okay, so um, so this, these two matrices here, the model matrix and the view matrix, is what in 3D, in 3.js uh, basically combines these two matrices in this matrix right here, the model view matrix. And you already saw that probably in your vertex shader, right? So we, we saw this example several times. So basically this, this here, the position here is in object uh, coordinate frames, right? Because this position here is basically taking the this variable here, right, position. And this variable here, position, is, is literally coming from the actual coordinates that you're reading from the OBJ, right? It means that this data right here is in object transformation or object coordinate system, right? So then it's multiplied by these two matrices that they're already combined by 3.js, which is a model view matrix. And then there, there will be um, uh, computed, uh, sorry, uh, multiplied by the projection matrix, right? Okay. And, and again, the thing is, these topics, right? Uh, the thing that you need to get from these lectures is the geometrical interpretation of this, right? Because in the end, 3.js creates this, this matrices uh, automatically, right? So, okay. So as uh, we continue, the project matrix, matrix basically what, we, what, what it does is, to, is uh, it will project points from the camera space or from the visible area from the space into a range that goes from minus one to one for x, y, and z, right? And this range is basically called the normalized device coordinates, okay? And again, this is weird, but you will understand, hopefully. And basically, the projection matrix depends on the type of projection you want. So there are many different pro projections, but the most common projections, projection types are either orthographic projections or perspective projections, right? The thing is, there. If you go to Wikipedia and you search for projection uh, matrices or projection types, you will see that there are actually different types of perspectives and different types of orthographic projections. But let's just skip with the the basic two options. And uh, the orthographic projection is a projection in which parallel lines remain parallel. Okay, so it looks like this. A cube looks like this. And the perspective one 
the parallel lines actually touch each other in something that is called vanishing points, right? And also something that is important is that perspective in perspective um, projection, objects get smaller when the distance, right? And obviously this is this is more similar to what happens in uh, reality, right? And if Ivan is asking Ortho is dropping the set, the set coordinate, yes, Ivan, ex exactly that. I mean, I will talk about that later, but yes, uh, what happens, I mean, in general, what happens in orthographic and perspective is when we do orthographic projections, we we'll basically get rid of the Z value. And with perspective projection, we use the Z value to divide the other uh, the other um, components, X and Y, and basically that is related with the homogeneous coordinates, right? So we already talked about that. Uh, if you remember the homogeneous coordinates, that is exactly what, what happens here. Okay. So this is uh, how a small car looks, right? In a or or orthographic, in which parallel lines remain parallel, all this is perspective. So obviously this car right here looks way more appealing, way more realistic, because this is how our eyes see the world, right? So let's see what happens, or what do we need to, to compute that. Okay, so let's talk about first the orthographic projection, okay? So we need to define the view volume, okay? And the view volume is basically the volume that, the volume of objects that will be visible from our camera, right? And it's defined by six user-defined planes. And this should not be here, and I need to remove that on my PDF. Okay, so basically it's, um, uh, again, it's, it's, it's composed by different um, defined planes. So the first one is the near plane, which basically means that every object, every pos every triangle or every geometry that is uh, outside this box, or in this case, outside this, this plane, will not be rendered, right? So you have the near and the far plane. You have the top and bottom and obviously a left and right, okay? So basically you construct a box that is representing the possible area to render, right? And the goal is basically constructing a matrix to scale, translate, and reflect the current coordinates into something that is called the normalized device coordinates, okay? So remember, the current coordinates are the ones from the camera because at this point, we already multiply everything by the view transformation matrix, which is the inverse of the camera transformation matrix, it means that this is a zero, zero, zero of every object here, right? Do you agree? And this is the X axis for every object there. This is a Y axis for every object there. And this is the Z axis from the object there, right? And if we are using web, uh, sorry, OpenGL, it means that all these objects are in the, in the negative Z uh, value with respect to the camera, right? Okay, so again, the goal is to create a transformation matrix to scale, reflect, and translate this box into a different box. So is um, and yeah. So again, if we imagine the view volume, the view volume has these coordinates, right? Basically, the same coordinates from the from the the camera, and this is what we want: the transformation, the the orthographic projection projection matrix, the only thing that, that it does is it will take this volume right here and it will scale the volume. It will translate its origin and basically reflect the Z axis to, to get every single geometry inside into this tiny box right here. And that tiny box, it's called the normalized device coordinates, right? It usually is uh, written as MDC. And I think it's also called the canonical view volume, okay? Okay, so again, this is what we need to do, geometrically speaking. Questions? You need to raise your hand. Okay, Nam. Yes, Nam. Hey, so one, one particular method for doing orthographic projection is to take the camera super far away and restrict the field of view. Is this the equivalent of normal device coordinates? Um, I will, I will talk about that. The thing is, the projection matrices, there are a lot of different ways to compute the same, to compute almost the same result. You will also see that on perspective matrices. That is why I ask you to read 
the the book from Peter Shirley because at the end of the of the book the uh, at the end of the perspective uh, section he even uh, shows different versions of the perspective matrix right so yeah one way to compute the orthographic projection is treating the 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 camera as if it was a perspective camera right with a huge zoom that is one way to compute it but there are different ways to compute it right but but again in the end what happens here is you're defining a volume on your scene, right? You're defining just a position for certain planes, a distance from certain planes. And what you want is to take the original coordinates from the camera, which, you're, which are the current coordinates from, from the entire uh, stuff, and you basically need to uh, translate, scale, and reflect those to get a different volume, right? And I will tell you why. But yeah, but you're, you're, you're right. That is one way to, to compute, other way to compute the orthographic uh, pr uh, projection matrix. Okay, so what is happening there? So this is the orthographic projection. I'm not getting into the details of how can you derive this thing because you already read about that and that is on the books. And, and again, we have 10 books, text, 10 textbooks. And I think in at least, I think I'm in, a, in at least six of them, uh, there's a... Uh, there's a section that talks about projection matrices. And the thing is, this is not fixed. There are different ways to compute this. But basically what you, you see here is it has a scale component, right? So basically it's scaling. Remember the original the original axis that we, we, we saw, it was, um, they were bigger, right? So the, the, the original box that we had, the view volume, was bigger, right? It means that we need to scale this box into this tiny box, right? So here we are scaling this, the, this box. We are also translating the the origin of the box because now, as you can see, the origin of this box is, is right here. It's in the middle of the box. And also we are um, reflecting the z-axis, okay? So this weird matrix right here is just a, comp it's, it's just a composition of simpler uh, uh, matrices that are basically are reflecting, translating, and scaling from one box to another. Why we do this? Because you will see later, when we will see clipping, the thing is, uh, right now maybe this will be confusing for you, it's like, okay, if I, if I already have coordinates on camera, and I'm already have uh, these planes, right? So I can, I can check if things are like outside those planes or not, or whatever. And uh, why do I need to then like distort this thing into this uh, small little cube? The thing is, you will see later that computing the clipping, the, the click, the clipping part that is basically uh, discarding triangles or discarding geometry that is outside your volume is easier if everything in your scene is in a box, in a normalized box, right? So this is this is a normalized box, right? It's a unitary box. Well, it's not unitary, but, but Okay, let, let, let me see. Um, it's a canonical view. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's called canonical view volume, okay? And the thing with this is that everything inside your your viewing area, your viewing uh, volume, right, is now inside this box that's co that goes from minus one, one, minus one, minus one, minus one, sorry, to one, one, one. And you will see later that it makes the math way easier if everything is inside that tiny box and there is absolutely no uh, there is um, no geometry that is basically like that has coordinates that, is, that are like less than minus one or more than one right you will probably you will understand that later right but this is basically what is happening okay and yeah okay good question Baby is asking why reflect. Very good question and very very important. Because why reflect? Because remember that when you compute the camera transformation, if you are op using uh, OpenGL, right? We compute the Z axis of the camera, that we call it W axis of the camera. We compute it as the opposite of the look at direction, right? So remember the camera is looking on this direction but we computed the z-axis on the other direction. So basically at the beginning, everything in your scene is on the negative set value of your camera. But now in the normalized device coordinates, you want everything on the positive side, okay? 
but why this is so relevant and i i thank you for as, uh, asking this question because i have a, even a warning right the thing is you need to understand that uh, this matrix, right? This orthographic matrix is doing a scaling and translating and reflecting this original view volume into this tiny volume. That is only what is that what is doing. It's taking a volume and scaling, translating and reflecting. Okay. So this is the part that is that is doing the reflection. Right? This minus two. This is what is using WebGL. However, if you I mean, I, I assuming that I am assuming that everybody read the book, right? This is the version that you can see in the book, right? So in the book, there is no reflection. The thing is that is perfectly fine. It's just a different convention. So remember, some people and some books and some technologies prefer to use prefer to define the the axis that is coming out of the monitor. Some people prefer to define it as the positive Z. And some other people prefer to use it as the negative negative set, right? It's just a convention. It doesn't matter. Obviously, I mean, it, it matters in the sense of the rest of your math needs to comply to what you're doing here, right? So if you decide to use, to, to reflect things, everything, right? Everything on, on, on your next computations needs to comply that. If you don't decide to reflect, everything on your following computation needs to comply that. But again, the thing is, you don't need to worry too much about these these matrices or how they are derived. There are tons of books and tons of information on how you can actually compute this and or how you can compute different versions of a orthographic projection matrix that can do, do something similar. But in the end, what you need is to understand what that matrix is doing in terms of like what is geometrically doing, right? Uh, because in every technology that you will use is already there, right? OpenGL and WebGL and 3.js, everything is already there and you just you just write, oh, I want a camera with this, this, this and this information and those technologies will basically create a transformation for you. So you will probably never have to, to actually compute your own camera transformation, but you need to understand uh, what it's actually doing. Okay, so yeah, so Again, this is just a different convention, so you can either reflect or not, and this is depending on your convention, the convention that you were using. Okay, so what happens in the projection, in the perspective projection, and this is basically my last slide for today, because we have 48 minutes already, which is good, because yeah, we need to end at 50. So basically what happens in the perspective projection is that the, the view volume that you define for the perspective projection is not, uh, it doesn't have the same the same shape, right? It's not a box. It's basically a truncated pyramid, right? And I think many people will can, can tell me, do you remember the name of this truncated pyramid in computer graphics? What's the name of this thing? Of the view volume frustum, exactly. So the frustum of a perspective camera is basically the volume of visible objects, right? The volume of visible objects that it will take that camera, right? And it is exactly the same concept, geometrically speaking, it's exactly the same concept from the orthographic uh, view volume. It's just, it, it just has a, a different, uh, different uh, shape, right? But it is the same. You have a near plane, you have a far plane, which is here, you have a left and right plane, and you have a top and bottom. The only difference is that now those, those uh, planes, right? They are related with a certain angle. Right, we we will we will see those those things. I mean, the details about the, those angles and the field of view and all those things. We will see those details on I mean on the lecture after the midterm. We will talk about uh, clipping, but uh, but yeah. But basically, what hap what what is happening here is that now the matrix is this one, right? And this matrix right here is just scaling, right? And um, is is basically shrinking. Right, the matrix. This volume right here is basically scaling this volume into this tiny volume. Right. And very good question. What is N L R R F? Yes. So basically, this this uh, numbers right here they represent your planes. So this is right, left, top, bottom. Uh, right. N is near. F is far. Right. 
So and and it's, it's the same for the orthographic projection. And yeah, sorry I didn't mention that. I I, I should mention that before. So for the orthographic projection, it's the same. So this is two uh, over right minus left, top minus bottom, uh, near minus uh, uh, far, right? So basically, it's, it's exactly like that. And again, you should have read this on, 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 on the book, right? The book is like going into way more details uh, about that. Okay, so we are, we are finishing exactly on the last... On the last uh, thing and let me just um, yes Nam you can you can talk uh, okay I'm afraid you assigned us the wrong chapter from the book you told us to read chapter 6 but the correct chapter is chapter 7 so just a PSA really? everyone stop what you're doing go read chapter 7 give me a second give uh, me a second <laughs> wow that, that that would be very sad Let me see, let me check. Oh my God, it's true. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, damn. Uh, it's fine. I, I yeah, think, don't worry, uh, don't worry. It was a good, good you, review you of the good review of the uh, linear transformations. Let me check, uh, just by, give me a second, give me a second. Oh, I know that, yeah, I, I know which, which, talk. okay, no, but it's, no, but it's perfectly fine, actually. If you all read that part, that is, yeah, I think that is better. Yeah, don't worry, I think it's good. So, you, yeah, you, you all, you, uh, transformation matrices, yes. If, you, if everybody read this, the, this, the, the chapter six, is yeah that's perfectly fine i think that is that is that is something that you also need to 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 read okay so what what happens next is please read chapter seven i hope that after this explanation reading chapter seven will be way less uh painful right again the thing is i mean don't worry too much in terms of how to actually derive these matrices because again there are different ways or different um, different strategies to actually derive the matrix, and I will not ask you to derive the perspective or the orthographic projection matrix on the midterm. Don't worry, I will not ask that. I will never ask that on a, on a, on a, an exam, right? If I ask something related with this, I will probably ask things in a conceptually in a conceptual way, right? Which is basically what you need in your real life, right? You will need to conceptually understand what a projection matrix is, is doing, but not necessarily like having the entire matrix by memory, right? Or deriving everything by memory, right? Okay, so my bad. I'm so, so, so sorry, but but it's not, that, it's not that bad. So don't worry. If you read that part, it was actually very good because that book, that section in particular for that book is really good in terms of uh, transformation matrices. So I think it's very good for you. And yes, so, but please read the chapter seven. And, um, okay, so Pavel has a question. Pavel? Hey, uh, I just had a question, yeah. like why, um, why do we need to scale it down? Um, yeah, I get it, the coordinate, uh, coordinate system gets better if it's the center, but why, why do we need to scale it down and make, make it in a box? Yeah, I, th I think again. I think that will be uh, that will be clear when we talk about clipping. But bottom line, what I can say right now is, the thing is, your your scene can have any possible. Your scene can have any possible uh, any possible scale, right? You can you can render something, or you can render objects that are super tiny. You can render buildings that are huge, right? So the way your scene is. Um, transform originally in your work coordinates can be totally crazy, right? The thing is, you need you need to you need then you need to compute the clipping. The clipping is when you take the every triangle on your scene, right? Already in your camera transformation in your in your camera coordinates and already like projected in 2D and you need to you need to compute for every every of every of uh, every triangle there. You need to see which triangles are outside the, the 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 view volume from the camera, 
and which triangles are actually kind of in the middle, right? Because if a triangle, for example, has some part of the triangle is visible and some part of the triangle is not visible, we need to trim the triangles, okay? So the thing is, computing, imagine that you don't scale it, okay? Uh, actually, imagine that, and it's a good question, actually. It's a very good question. Um, let me just come back here. Imagine that you just use your original view view model, okay? So in your original original view model, you have you already have information about those planes. It's actually very very easy to to get the information of all those triangles and see if those triangles are outside this box or not, right? That will be actually very easy. The problem comes when you have a triangle that is kind of in the middle. So imagine that you have a triangle that is part inside of this uh, of this uh, volume here and other part of the triangle is basically outside what you need to do for that triangle in particular is you need to basically trim that triangle so by trimming that triangle it means that you will need to find the intersection between that plane with the lines of that triangle right with basically the axis not the axis sorry the edges of that triangle and you will need to compute new vertices for those, for that triangle and basically you'll need to create new triangles i mean the explaining this without drawing uh, is, is kind of hard but uh if, let me see let me see no I, I think i cannot can i annotate maybe so imagine i have a triangle that is part inside or part is outside this this volume right this is getting horrible, but imagine that it's part inside and part, part outside. So imagine that the intersection between this plane right here, the right plane and this triangle, let's imagine that is here. So what the clipping process will do is it needs to compute this position right here and this position right here to basically create, in this case, it will create two new triangles and it will get rid of this triangle here and it will only keep this, right? So the math you need to actually compute these intersections and create these new triangles is way easier if those planes are in the coordinates 1, 1, or minus 1. So if everything on your scene is already, like, normalized and everything is just in a tiny box and is no, far, no farther than 1 and no, right, that 1 or minus 1, basically your... Your, the computation that you need to perform is way easier. That is the only reason we need to scale the view volume into this tiny box. So is that more clear right now? Is that clear? Can you say yes if that is clear, Pablo? Okay, perfect, thank you, great. Okay, so... Um, yeah, we don't have time for, for uh, more questions because we are already uh, ahead of time. So thank you so much. And, uh, and again, the next lecture is the review. Um, and see you. And good luck. Thank you so much. Bye.